Speaker phone off? Or, you can turn, or, or Bob, you can turn your mic off. On the, My on mic phone. is off. I thought I had it on mute. Nope. It's all Bob's fault. No, we heard all of it. Bob. Okay. Yeah, Bob. Be careful because everybody's watching us. I'm doing them. You're on now, so don't say anything you don't want to be overheard saying. <laughs> okay, so we were just right across there where that car is driving. Oh, okay. Okay? So that's where they're coming from. It's about three quarters of a mile way out. The Confederates? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's the Hoods Division finally got down here. It's about 3 o'clock, 3.15 in the afternoon, right? Mead goes down to the Peach Orchard. Just, you can't see it, it's just it's over on, on the other side of the, the trees here. And he says, he says to, uh, hold on, we gotta wait a second. Oh, Sand okay, sorry. Out we'll, we'll, we'll wait. Yeah, no but there's the tower we were at. So the peach orchard oh, is like yeah. right directly over. between us and the tower. Yeah. Oh, that is the tower. Where's the tower? Yeah, right there. Right we're about to yeah, get to the exactly right. highlight of this tour and we're just waiting for our group to be assembled. So I'm telling you what's happening. Oh, far away. Gettysburg. Far away. We're standing on Little Round Top right now. All you can see is the very top. Yeah. Now we got further than the future. Almost directly in line. I can't get there. We go. Hi, Jane. Okay. So as I was saying, the Confederates got here. So as I was saying, we came from right over there with that where that truck is. That's Warfield Ridge. That's where they're coming from. But we don't know that yet. On, on our side, right? Uh, what we do know is Mead goes out to the peach orchard, goes to Sickles and says, WTF, dude, what are you doing? He's mad, he is pissed off, right? And Sickles says, wow, I thought this is the, you know, and Mead said, you're nuts. And, and Sickles says, okay, puppy dog guys, you know, I'll go back. And Mead says, they ain't gonna let you back. Because mm -hmm. they're on all sides of them at this point. Yeah. Right. 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 So he's caught there, so Mead says, oh my gosh, me, uh, 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 Sickles, who's defending this? Right. <laughs> Nobody, right? <laughs> so we think. So Meade goes to his chief engineer of the Army of the Potomac, a guy by the name of General Governor Kemble Warren. That's him. Now, why is he named that? <laughs> Guess where he's from? New York. New York. Where? Specifically? Oh, uh, Cold what? Spring. Cold Spring. He's from wow, Cold Spring, New York. Cold Spring, New York. Right across from... He has, a sis, he has a chief of staff named Washington Roblin. Anybody know who that is? Washington Built the Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn. Roblin. Oh. That's his oh, next in command. Wow. Warren's sister is named Emily. Later become Emily mm -hmm. Warren Roblin. Roblin and finishes the bridge. It just shows you how tight-knit this union oh. leadership you know, Union Army stuff. So, John, is. but John, I thought it was John Roebling. Is it Washington Roebling? No, John Roebling's the, the kid. The kid. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. It's Washington Roebling. Huh. The one that started it. Right. He got the bends and all that. Oh, yeah, right. Um, so, Meade sends Ro uh, Warren up here to sit, find out what is going on. So, what does he do? He orders there's a, a Union battery down there at Devil's Death. Right. That's where the rocks, rocks are. are. The rocks. Yes, that's where the rocks are. Okay. Oh. He orders the battery to fire into the woods where we just were. And he sees all this commotion when they fire in there. And that's how we know that's where they are and they're coming. Oh. It's about 3.15. And wham, the artillery from the other side of the field. Remember, these guns have that range. Start flying over here. Meade's going, or uh, Warren's going, my God, what are we going to do? So he sends out his aide to try to find the closest corps commander. His aide finds the, the, the commander of the 5th Corps, George Sykes. Sykes sends his aide out to try to find, you know, the uh, the division commander. And while he's doing that, he runs into a gentleman by the name of Colonel Strong Vincent, who's the head of the 3rd Brigade of, the, of that division. Um, and Vincent is a fa Vincent is a is a perfect Lincoln-esque template, if you will. Hmm. Knows absolutely nothing about military <laughs> stuff, right? He's from uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, graduates from Harvard, and when the war starts, he says, gosh, I got I to gotta do something. Organizes a brigade, and he does what Lincoln does. He just reads everything. Hmm. And he becomes so brilliant that McClellan says his 
regiment is probably the best in the entire corps, if not the whole. That, coming from McClellan, that's quite a compliment. Yeah. Mm. McClellan had high standards when it came to actual military competence, you know. Um, so he runs into Vincent and his brigade, and Vincent says, what are you doing? You're running around with these orders. He says, well, I, I, can, I can't give them to you. You're just a colonel. You know, i got to find your division commander, you know. He says again, give me the orders. What are they? He says, I, we got to take that position. And Vincent says, done. He's done. I'll do it. Don't have to worry about it. Does he wait around and say, I can't do that. I have to talk to the division commander first, and then he has to tell me that. No, it's done. Mm. And what he does in the next 10 to 15 minutes, in my view, this is my own view, is probably one of the most important actions this entire three days. He gets on his horse. Now, they're coming from the other side, by the way, from the Baltimore Pike, because that's where all the Union supplies are. Jumps on his horse, rides around this whole position, and in the span of a few minutes is able to identify the terrain. And you'll notice, it doesn't just go straight down. There's terraces. Right. And not only are there terraces, but if you go to the southern end of Little Round Top, you saw how it went down and will go over there. There's a spur that juts out, and then it goes down on either side. So he looks at all this in a few minutes and comes up with an absolutely brilliant defensive line, which starts way over there where that monument is. Over there. No. Oh, okay. No, back there. there. Back. Oh, okay. And down the hill. So it's the down, top it's not it. on top of here. It's oh. on one of these terraces. And this is strong Vincent? Yeah. He's doing this. Okay. Vincent has a, has a brigade. Vincent has a brigade of four regiments. The 16th Michigan, which is in the beginning of the line, because they're marching this way, followed by the 44th New York, the 83rd Pennsylvania, which is his old regiment, and the 20th Maine. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's why they end up on the left. Mm -hmm. Not because they were first, it's because they were last. <laughs> in, the, in the order of march. Oh, wow. They're coming up from here. Hmm. So, we'll go over there and you'll be able to see this more clearly. And I'll talk a little bit more about... Uh, actually, we can go over there now. 